Good morning to you. Daybreak here. Morning, Vicki. Good morning. A great guest in studio, the executive director of the Mason County Economic Development Council. Choose Mason.com. Jennifer Barria, good morning. Happy Monday. Happy Monday to you. We had uh, not put the wraps on a wonderful holiday uh, because there's still lots to do. Uh, we heard last hour that there was the big parade up in Tahuya, which is was bigger than it has been, I think, in years past. And there's always a lot of little pop-up festivals that happen and, mm -hmm. but this really helps the uh, tourism get these people in for the weekend stay here spend their money and then go home bye -bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for visiting it was nice to see you <laughs> please come back <laughs> please come back next year <laughs> i think it's interesting um when we look at tourism in washington state specifically because we're not a tourism based really economy not like nevada you don't you come here because it's beautiful and you want to kind of kind of look at the area and it's a lot more relaxed we're just not quite so focused on visit 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 sure, visit sure, visit sure. visit us um i think it's interesting even with that mentality to think that um in this last census we were the 13th most visited state by foreigners so wow. you look at the draw that that we have and we might not have the the vegas mentality but our area is beautiful and people that live in big cities and a lot of foreign foreigners live in those big mammoth cities want to come out and experience the the nature the yeah. beautiful sure. parks that we have the national forests that we have that is a big draw to them and and just really being able to calculate what's that impact because it is definitely an impact economically I mean, we've got social and environmental as well, but, right. you know, I'm from the EDC, so we're here to talk about economics. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, is there a nationwide, maybe the nationwide EDC that crunches these numbers, or is it a state deal that they've got uh, a formula that's set up, like blank visitor, one visitor equals this. They do have, like um, it's not a formula that's that's that specific, but the multiplier, it, it has to do with kind of your histories of how much people have spent when they've stayed in an mm -hmm. area. So it's really more area specific than, I, I don't even have a blanket number for you Washington visitors to spend this much. So if you are, um, a smaller community festival you're looking at number of visitors the amount that they spend at your event how long they're staying you know all of these have have an impact and that kind of tells your story your broader story of this is what I do for you as the community this is what Oyster Fest brings to the community right you know it's nice that they bring what was it close to 10,000 people last year um, or the year before, one At of those. Fest? I, I think it was per day. Per day. I mean, it was packed. I it mean, was. Wow, it was impressive. Numbers. Right. And so you look at that, and if they're staying for the whole two days, then you're getting even more. Yeah. And your story for your festival, even a smaller one, like your parade or Allen Days that's happening this weekend, you know, what does that look like? How can I say, you know, it's important to, to work on these festivals or to support these festivals because this is what we do. This is what we bring to our community. The other day, the other weekend, there was probably four events just on the Saturday mm -hmm. and two other events on the Sunday, which was a yeah. continuation. You know, we talk a lot about not having the uh, hotels and motels here for folks to stay. Um, that's got to be a, a major driver when it comes to the exponential value of these visitors because they stay a day. They may go out to eat once. If right. they spend the night, then they got to deal with breakfast, right. lunch, and, and dinner, dinner for the next mm -hmm. day, yes. plus any other amenities that they may go visit. Well, and you look at, we're building these amazing festivals, and they're staying outside sure. of our county. So chances are, once they're done with the festival, they're not staying in town and eating. They're going we home, kind of, yeah, kind of resting for a minute because... 
you've been to festivals. You just got to take a minute sometimes. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then you get up and then you go out. And if they're staying in Olympia or if it's Allen Days, if they're staying up in Bremerton, then they those communities are getting, they might come back, but they're not getting those those extras that, you know, we want to keep here sure. in, our, yeah. in our county. So hotel places to stay, things like that are definitely important in supporting those. Need some bed and breakfasts built That's out here. Mm-hmm. That would be really we'll good out that. here. Do you have any woods. numbers on how much the Airbnb kind of economy yeah. is here in Mason County as people come out? I don't, but that's a good thing to to kind of research. Yeah, I'm gonna make a note. <laughs> make a note. Make a note. <laughs> I mean, I can imagine that you know we are woefully inadequate when it comes to hotels and things like that. We we, we all, do have more vac. Yeah. there's like we one do have more Shelton. vacation. Homes. Is there more than one mm-hmm. in Shelton? There's a lot of those places where people can Airbnb. There are, oh, and yeah. and the impact that they're having on the hotel industry is quite phenomenal as well. I bet. Yeah. Well, I'll have to look into that. Yeah, it'd be good to see yeah. how those See, numbers. it works both ways. <laughs> That's it. We just Start thinking bed and breakfast. <laughs> right? Any other folks well, in and, conversation? and how, do you, how do you do the bigger groups? I mean, Airbnbs I are great, That's but true. when my family goes on vacation, you know, there's... A what, gaggle. 25 <laughs> yeah, gaggle there's 25 of us right. just in my immediate family with all of their you know sure. those siblings having kids how do you find a place that can support that without having to stay you know 20 miles That's away true. from each other yeah. so meet in the middle <laughs> for sure for sure well, it's an important conversation to have on the economy and especially this tourist economy as we are the gateway to the Olympics and just about an hour, hour and a half from, well, we're an hour, about an hour and a half from Seattle, from Portland, from the ocean, from the mountains. Everything mm-hmm. is, is centrally located here uh, in the South Sound. So it's a great place for folks to make this their home base, I guess. Yeah. Well, and how do we translate the amazing summers we have and still support those tourism activities throughout the year? Because yeah. you always see a lull. You always see sure. a drop off when the gray comes back and the rain starts down. Sure. But there mm-hmm. are things that we can do that can really support those Absolutely. events or areas that are still trying to do something in December. Do you teach in some of your classes businesses that do have more of a summer model how to keep continue keep, keep for the solvent winter, yeah. in the in the winter months is that an option that uh, like a class that you would offer to somebody or could offer to it's, somebody it's it's a class that we could offer um kind of tweaking it a little bit not necessarily telling them how they should but how can we look at what it is that they offer and extend that so it's really less of a class more of a one on one um type of situation if i offer kayaking you know if that's my business you know let's look at you you have data from from past years how many visitors do you actually have is there something that you could add that is a nominal fee that maybe pulls those people in in the winter time so is it a matter of adding I don't know, wetsuits to, right. <laughs> to your offering. Right. And that encourages people to come out there. But it's really taking a look at what it is that they're offering, if it is even transferable into the winter. Sure. And if not, what kind of talent base do they have that we can extend that? Yeah. Huh. So it is it is possible, but it's, le- it's more of a one-on-one kind of situation at this point. Well, choose Mason.com. Great website to get all sorts of good information. You can also visit them. <laughs> just up the road from us at 310 West Coda in the PUD3 uh, payment center there. You can see the door to the EDC and uh, head on in there, see uh, Jennifer and Karin, very cool stuff. All right, good to see you. You too, and we'll plug Allen Days. You've got a potential festival this weekend to, All right. to head on up there. I like those festivals. <laughs> That's fun too. Allen is a beautiful beautiful area it oh, is cool. and it's supposed to be gorgeous this weekend yeah. yes it is i'm very excited vicky's nice. saying the whole rest of the month is good <gasps> in the 80s we See? finally got summer i know <laughs> <laughs> finally i know right <laughs> it was cold on <laughs> saturday <laughs> it was and then when i walked outside and it had rained i was like what the ground is wet <laughs> <I know. laughs> jennifer baria executive director of the mason county edc have a great day thank you you too